Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. And today I'm going to be going over book finds and non-book finds from thrift stores and estate sales and some library book sales. And you know, if you've watched any of my, my stuff, you know, books are my wheelhouse, but I always say, if you see cool, you have to buy cool. And sometimes just the, the where you're going, you go in with one thing in mind and it gives you something else. So you always have to be, be on the lookout for things that are, that can give you some resale and you know, that, that, that are, are, are cool finds for your store, for your resale. So that'll give you some price comps and uh, let you know what's working in my store and then types of things that catch my eye so that, uh, you know, hopefully it'll help you and, and help, help you learn and see things that, that'll work for you too. So hope you enjoy it. Uh, appreciate some comments and uh, sub subscribe. And with that, let's, uh, let's jump straight in. Okay. So Again, books are my wheelhouse, and so we'll go through some books, and then the non non book items that I found some kind of a wide, wide range of things, and then some some more books. So, one of the first books I found was awesome, and this is um, it's this Dayton Publishing Contemporary uh, Queen Rearing. This is one thing. If I ever see any any books on bees, I always look at them because beekeeping and books on bees generally will sell really good. I got I got this book for a dollar. This book sells for 49 bucks. Uh, 45 to 50. I saw one just sell recently for 49. That's why I said 49. So that's a good thing. If you ever see beekeeping, always look at it. It, it, it can be some really good money in beekeeping. Alright, the next one was kind of a fun book. I've sold a couple of these in the past. It's Contiki and this Thor Heyerdahl. If you don't know about Thor, this guy was the, the real deal. The one of the great adventurer. Uh, he wrote this book. Uh, he and he had this idea that some of the Polynesian islands were could have been um, settled by South Americans. So, how do you prove that that's possible? You get five of your buddies and you get on a wooden raft and you sail across, you know, across the the Pacific on this wooden raft just to show that it could be done. So, I think they made a movie of this, but really interesting guy if you look him up. So, this is ten or fifteen dollar book. I got this for a buck. Uh, this this came from an estate sale. Another thing at the same estate sale. This is kind of bizarre. It's this uh, it's West Virginia City of Martinsburg 175th anniversary uh, program. This was from 1953. I didn't even look this up for comps. I said, this is the type of thing I want uh, in my store. I thought this might be a hard to find thing. I've seen two of these sell the exact same thing for 15 bucks. Uh, they basically just threw this in. They didn't even charge me for this. So I got this free. It's 15 dollar program. Um, now here's here's something that I always look out for too, Warhammer. Now Warhammer, some stuff can be dated, but these Warhammer books, a lot of times based on the gameplay, they have books that are written for the characters, and some of the older ones are actually can be quite, quite, um, you know, valuable. I got this for uh, it was a dollar. This was a dollar ninety nine at the store. I got this from. Uh, this is a thirty dollar book on the Empire. It's a original Warhammer book. Great condition, wonderful condition, good find. Keep your eye out for Warhammer stuff. Now the dated, like the modules, the stuff, because Warhammer ages their things. Um, if you find the brand new stuff that's still in play, I mean that stuff's like gold, right? But most of the time what you find that people have, have donated, it's the older stuff. And most of that's going to be in the, the, it's still got value for collectibles, uh, you know, the $10 range. So anytime you see Warhammer, War, Warhammer uh, 40k, look it up, you, you won't be you know it's it's good finds hey this one uh conquering adventure games i've actually got one of these in my store right now i see this is a 20 dollar book i got this for a dollar 50. uh this is cool back in the day uh when you had like zork um you know there was that was just what comes to mind these the, a lot of the the early games yeah zork suspended enchanter the, these are games that were text-based games like infocom well sometimes you get stuck well this book gives you clues on how to get stuck and what's funny about it is that it doesn't um, give those clues like straight out. It puts them in code, so you have to break the code. I've got one of these in my store right now. I've sold them in one in the past. I got it for a dollar fifty. It's a twenty dollar book, so great find. And it's fun subject matter. If you've never played the old Zork games, um, you know it's mentioned in Ready Player One in the, in the book. It's it's a lot of fun. So you know, check it out. Twenty dollar book. Uh, here's another. It's a, a Palladium Press uh, box nightmares. This is is a, another RPG. Uh, I got this for a dollar fifty. It, I see it priced all over the place, ten to twenty-five. I think it's probably going to be seventeen to eighteen dollars. 
anytime I see RPG type stuff, role playing game modules, game sets, even though it's not like you know Dungeons and Dragons or you know the big name ones, you know like like Warhammer, always check them out. It's a good dollar fifty. I'll probably list it for seventeen ninety nine. So I've seen them sell between ten and twenty two ish. So it's good good find. All right, now this one, when I saw it, I didn't. I knew it was. I was going to get it. This, uh, this. I didn't even have to worry about this technique of motor racing. You can just tell by that's like this Italian guy. You know, it's got like the Indy car stuff. Uh, I got this for two dollars. It was. Um, I see this this sell anywhere from twenty to fifty. Usually, when it's on the twenty dollar side, it's ratted out. It's the fifty dollar side. It's in really good shape. This one's in really good shape, so I'm thinking this will be forty to fifty bucks. Again, um, I, I paid um, I paid two 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 dollars for this one. All right, it's a great find. I love finding this kind of stuff. In that same place, here was an Indy 500. Um, paid dollar fifty for this. This is the 2006 program, the hundredth running, and also they had you know a visitor guide for you know Indianapolis. You know has I think it's Mario Andretti there. I think. Um, anyway, has him on there, both of these. I'll put these together. I've seen this one sell, you know, by itself for 20 bucks. I'll throw this one with it. I'll still get 20, maybe 25. But the two together make it a little unique from other ones that are out there. So again, great finds for the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. And then uh, the final book before I jump into some non-book items. And I hadn't seen any comps on this, but I'll get 10 bucks for this. I paid a buck for it. And it's the best drum rhythms ever written. So that was cool. It was actually sold at a Hal Leonard store for twelve ninety five. I think I'll, it'll it'll resell for ten bucks. So uh, I have good success with this kind of music things. All right. So that's let's take a break from books and just go through some of the non book crazy items I found. Uh, first off, I found this game, uh, Drunk Kings Sealed. Uh, this is a, I see this at fifteen bucks. I pay uh, I paid a buck for it. And just this little box game, be easy to ship. That's fun. Then there were these other games. It's uh, same. It's a card game, Five Crowns. I see these sell for ten to fifteen, depending on how they do shipping. These were a buck. Um, they had three of them. I said, ah, they seem like they sell. They sell all the time. So these are all sealed, never been used. So they make it worth a little more when they're when they're open. They're used. These are not worth as much. But I'll get ten to fifteen bucks for these. Um, so good finds for a buck. All right, then I found this vintage, uh, this was an estate sale, pickup sticks. It's only worth five or six bucks, but I'm gonna keep this. I remember playing these. Uh, might've had this exact same one, kind of this vintage thing. So this is gonna stay stay here at the house and our, our game collection in case anybody wants to go old school and play some games. So that'll be fun. Pickup sticks and you know, it's the classic ones where you, you know, if you ever played it, you know, where you had the plastic ones and you hold them and drop them and then, then you have the other one to, to throw them out so that's fun all right now i found a tennis racket prince the uh 03 orange now when you look at tennis rackets remember always make sure they're not warped and look at your edge wear this one's in good shape the grips that'll have to be re-gripped i'll take good photos of that but this is still a f with the bag it's uh i see this sell without the cover for anywhere between 30 to 50 bucks i always look at the newer graphite prince rackets you can't hardly go wrong with them if you see them get them for a good price this was uh 2.99 uh, this will this this will sell at least for 40 bucks plus shipping and what i do for shipping on these is i usually take two priority mailboxes and put them together and to make it long enough and it's like 12.95 shipping and and the, the buyer pays for that so Great find. This will be at least a thirty dollar, but I'll probably ask uh, forty to forty five dollars plus. You know, since the grips are gone, uh, you know, needs to be redone. I'll probably ask for forty bucks plus shipping on this. So great find. All right. So now here's a fun one. I found this fully complete Buck Fever game. Okay, uh, you might be a redneck if right. You play Buck Fever. Uh, it was I, I was able to had some just little bitty masking tape on the edge so it wouldn't tear anything up i was able to actually open it in the thrift store and check it out all the parts all the little cards were there it wasn't anything too extravagant uh, but the board itself is kind of cool you know if you like this sort of thing you know it's got a big this big board but 
One just sold. I've seen this sell for um, on, on eBay for forty nine dollars complete. That's what I got. I paid two ninety nine for it. So it'll be forty nine again. I'll ship it in, in priority mail with two boxes. But that'll be a great find for two ninety nine. Great subject matter. Uh, it's from like the seventies. This edition, hundred percent complete. Love it. When you when you buy these from uh, from stores, open them up. You know if they're not taped too bad. If they if they don't care, open them up. You can look at the instructions. Usually, maybe sometimes even printed on the board. But if the instructions are there, the instructions will always have what the contents are. And you can see it should have twenty cards and four playing pieces or whatever. And you just take a second and just count them and make sure it's complete. Um, sometimes for really good games, if they're not complete, it's okay. If you get them for a buck or two, check it and, and check on your phone and check the game and look for parts. Sometimes you can part these out. It works good. I'm going to sell this complete because it's mint. Uh, I mean, it's, it's near mint. Uh, lightly played. 100% uh, complete. This will be a $49 game. Uh, again, paid, paid uh, $2.99 for that one. So, awesome find there. Okay, now here's something that was a near miss. Um, well, let me go through a couple things first. I was in the office supply section, and I've increasingly, if I go through a thrift store, I'll look at the office supplies. And here were some vintage Scripto thick lead. And if you look at it, there's a black and some red. And these things have, each of them have five really thick leads in them in a little wood tray. Each one of these little boxes I see sell for Five bucks, four fifty, four ninety-five. I'll probably put all these together. List all these. There's two, four, six, eight of them. I'll get thirty bucks for this. I paid fifty cents for this box of Scripto. I don't know. That's fifteen cents there. That's like like the original price, I believe. On the uh, yeah, look at the original price on it. It was fifteen cents, and I'll I'll sell these for about five bucks a piece. Good idea. Look in look into the office supply sections of the thrift stores. All right, on that line, I found these, I don't know anything about them, but it's these um, Garland Carbide Pin Refills, and there's two boxes of them, uh, nearly complete. And I thought, man, this I scored on this. These things, you see people sell these things for like 10 bucks a piece, and see it's these little pin refills. Well, I get them, I get them home because they were sealed. I get them home, and I open them up, and they're dried up no ink comes out of them. I'm like, oh man, I only paid 50 cents each for them, so that's not too bad. You know, and I see one of these sell for, a lot of times people put like two of them together, two two of these for like 10 bucks. So I'm thinking for 50 cents, I'd probably just scored, you know, I probably just scored 70 or 80 bucks for these. It's, it was a really good find for 50 cents each. Well, you know, what you find think is good just goes to the, you know, just goes away right disappears when they do there's no ink in them I don't know if they're just so old or dried up whatever but then I saw a listing where someone had taken uh, they had six of these and they clearly put in the listing read does not work dried up whatever and they still sold for ten bucks so I figure I'm gonna try to do the same thing I'm gonna try to list these things and say Look, they're dried up. I, I don't know if people refill them or what, but if that's the case, I should still be able to get like 20 bucks, maybe 25 bucks for all these. I paid a dollar, 50 cents each. So, you know, maybe I pull a success out of something that was just a complete failure. But that's, uh, you know, these, again, from office supply areas, the thrift stores, kind of a good idea. Okay, then the final non-book thing found this tube of these little wood wafers and it said I got them, the whole tube of them for 50 cents they were sealed I don't know if that was the original seal or the thrift store and and I, I wasn't sure what they were but I thought they were interesting well it turns out that when, when I started looking you can see there they're milk caps for this Vallow milk okay I see these listed it's for like some state capital game I see them listed for like five bucks each the only I saw a sales comp that had three or four of these and it sold for like 20 bucks. So I think it's a thin market, but I think that there's more than 50 here. I'm going to see, I might have like, if it's a state capital game for Valo Milk, I may have all 50 states, all 50 state capitals in my tube. If so, I'm going to spread them out. I'm going to put off, I'll, I'll put them all together. And I think from what the other sale was since they're five bucks a piece 
I only saw one sale of three or four of them, like I said, for it was like 20 bucks. I think I can probably, if, if my plan works out, I may be able to get like 50 bucks for these. Um, we'll see. It's a thin market, but I don't care. I'll list it. Somebody may want them. But again, it was Vallow Milk uh, Milk Caps. I'll still have to do some research on, on, on that, but again, we'll see. Kind of kind of cool find, unexpected. So uh, be interested to see what the comments are on that. So that's all the non-book items. A few more books to show that I got. This one's interesting, this Kentuckian, Kentuckian at uh, the Court of the Czars. Uh, it's about this guy, Cassius Marcellus Clay. If you think about it, that's Cassius Clay, that's Muhammad Ali. That, that this may have been who he was named after. He was an abolitionist, um, worked to abolish slavery, and evidently he did some mission work to Russia and went to the Court of the Czars around, you know, before the, you know, before the revolution. Uh, actually, it says 1861 and 2, and 1863 to 69, so, so 1860s time frame. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. I found this on Amazon, uh, unavailable, ABE. I didn't find any comps, so I gotta do some research, but I paid, um, I paid $3 for this one. I think it's a good find. I'll get some more comps on it. Um, here's one really nice book called Congo. Uh, expeditions and and death of Lieutenant Emery Taut Navy I thought this was a little bit better than it was I paid three bucks for it I've seen it sell for eight listed for 10 to 16 so not as much uh, not as good as I thought but interesting subject matter It'd be nice um, here's a one dollar one I found for uh, train running for the Confederacy kind of a Civil War history paid a buck for it I see this sell for ten bucks and then I found some interesting, they're, they're worth about 10 bucks each. Um, this was some token collectors, like for subway tokens, it's like some coinage. Here's uh, coinage of Switzerland, and then here's one of uh, crowns of the British Empire. They're all really good condition. This is back in the day for collectors, printed resources. I see these sell for 10 bucks a piece. I got them for a dollar a piece. Um, so that was great. Here's a, um, Electronic Designer's Handbook. Also, this I got this for a dollar, and uh, I see this sell for ten or fifteen dollars. It's 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 a good book. Um, then the last two, another dollar fine. This Octong uh, Panzer. This is uh, ten to fifteen bucks. I paid a buck for it. Good subject matter. And then the final was a New Mexico history. Uh, I got this in New Mexico. I just returned from there from a quick trip. Uh, this this unsolved murder mystery. Uh, this cricket in the web. I see this sell between 10 and, and 20 bucks. Um, usually more like the 18 to 20 range, but um, I did pay $3 for this one. Thought it was good subject matter and it's got good value on it. So anyway, that's it. Lots of stuff, books, non-books, some maybe some misses or near misses, something that'll turn out to be good. Um, again, when you see cool, you gotta buy cool. Sometimes you just have to roll the dice and you don't know, you know what you're gonna find. Um, so hopefully you found that informative, uh, help you in your searches and what might work for you. And um, that's it, until next time, be safe and peace.